Hello and welcome to my channel Inch by Inch Art. So I got some cosplay, which I did a little short video of before, uh, just sort of playing around with it to see how it works, and I think I'm going to be able to use it to make minis. So my first experiment making a mini is just going to be fairly simple. I decided to make a little mushroom man. I think in some tabletop RPGs they refer to them as myconids. So those were my inspiration for this particular mini. I just took a ball of tinfoil to be my armature, and I'm wrapping cosplay all around the tinfoil armature, and I'm just turning it into a little Mushroom. Once I've got the base covered, I give him a little mushroom cap, and because myconids are like mushroom monsters, he's going to have an eye. Some have multiple eyes, I just decided that one eye would be fun. I tend to do this sometimes, like when I made my chest mimic for how to easily make yourself your own chest mimic. I just went for one eye with that, where frequently they have many eyes. a little bit like a minion at this point. I decided that I wanted the eye to pop out a little bit more, so I added some clay and I'm just rounding that out. I didn't really have an exact thing in mind when I made this, I just sort of knew that I wanted to make a little mushroom monster, a little bit bigger than a goblin, probably around the size of like a dwarf character. I think he actually is the same size as my dwarf mini. But I just sort of looked at reference images of mushrooms and a couple pictures of some myconids that other people have done art of, but I just looked at mushroom pictures and took my inspiration mostly from that with some of the features that I decided to add or change about my particular one. And as usual, I'm just using my silicon sculpting tools. I figure it works well with polymer clay, it probably works fine with cosplay, and it did. One thing that I did notice is uh, the one that I got is very soft, so it picks up really small details well, which is good for some things like trying to put these little wrinkles on his body, but not always a positive. So thinking fingerprints, for example, just from touching it lightly, I felt like my fingerprints were really pressing in where the Super Sculpey I usually use for my sculptures doesn't pick up my fingerprints as badly. And then obviously there's other options like Sculpey Firm. So I'm thinking I might get Get the firm or I think there might be an ultra firm of the cost clay. As part of taking inspiration from actual mushrooms, I used this little bottom part instead of feet. I did the, I think it's called a cup of the mushroom. It's basically that little base part that frills around the bottom that you usually say where they're coming out of the ground. For the mouth, instead of just doing a regular mouth, I liked the actual part on mushrooms that's called the ring or skirt, and it sort of sits out like a little frill.
And another piece of inspiration from actual mushrooms, I decided to add scales. So when you see mushrooms out in the forest and they have basically little bumps on them, sometimes they're colored or discolored. So like on the classic red mushroom, you'll see little white spots. Those are the scales. And now to show you what I'm going to do instead of feet. So I'm putting the bottom of the Mushroom Man onto the wooden puck that's going to be the base. And I'm using Super Sculpey to not only adhere him down to the base, but also to give him little root tendrils. Fun fact, these root tendrils are referred to as mycelium. And again, for coloring, I went with actual mushroom inspiration, so I really like that classic yellow, orange, red color, so I decided to put that on top of his cap. And then I think blue mushrooms are really pretty. There's some where I live now, and they're gorgeous, so I decided to give him blue features. And if anyone wants to know, that blue paint that I used is folk art acrylic blue flash. I had a little bit of fun when I was painting the cap and I did the red in the center like a swirl and I thought it looked really cool but in the end you don't actually really see it anyway so it didn't really matter. So now I'm moving on to washes. Hold on, please, kitten. So I've moved on to doing washes, and I decided that since I want them to be very light and look like, you know, classic white mushroom stock, I did the whole white base coat, and now I'm just gonna do a very thinned out wash of tan. Once my first wash is dry, I go in with a very little bit of black wash. And this is just acrylic paint that's been heavily watered down. It's what I usually use for my washes. And I'm just very intentionally applying it to certain places. I didn't really want it to get too dark and muddy looking because I didn't want it to look gray. I want it to be clear that it, it is white. It's just got natural, you know, dirt and, and that discoloration that mushrooms get on them over time, they turn kind of slightly brownish. So I'm doing it all around the base because I want to make those little mycelium bits pop and then I just shaded him with it. And now I'm doing a white dry brush on the scales because as I said before they're usually white or lighter colored on the caps. And I'm just touching them up with a little bit of extra white to make sure they really pop. And now onto UV resin. I love using resin on minis when I can. It just gives them a little bit extra something that makes them look alive and I really enjoy. So I did it on his eye and I did actually get a tiny bit in his mouth too. And here he is. I 
I think he came out really cute and I'm not actually sure if he's going to be an enemy or maybe a friendly NPC that could be kind of fun, but I'll definitely be looking into stats and seeing how I can add him into our homebrewed games. I hope you enjoyed this. If you'd like to see more of me making my art, please like, follow, and subscribe.